So would anybody like to start it off with a question? <laughs> I feel I'm on an old motorbike and need a kickstart. So. It's very simple, on it. Look for simplicity. The three principles, you can't function without them. You don't even know reality exists without them. And that's divine mind, divine consciousness, and divine thought. Now, they, they're a gift that we all have. We all have it. Now, how we use it is up to us and using our personal mind. That's it. It's that simple. You look for simplicity, and the simplicity is a very difficult thing to try and figure out. Because everybody wants to try and figure it out. There's nothing to figure out. You have to just let it go through your head, and if you have a good feeling, you'll get it. You'll get it to a certain extent. You know, the wise from the very beginning have always left clues for us. All these writings from the beginning of time, they all have clues. And if you can figure out what this pattern is, you'll see they're always the same. And if you see that, then you might get it. Like for instance, uh, everything being one. That sounds simple, but it, let's put it another way, and I'll ask you if you can because you've probably read a lot more than I have. And I'll ask you, you know how they say there is only one God, there is only one Allah, everything is one? They're all clues. And the form and the formless are all one. And if you were a physicist, you can't talk to a physicist like that. You'll say to a physicist, you know, before form, there's an energy. It has a formless energy. When this formless energy takes form, we call it matter. And everything in this physical water, world is created from this matter. Immaterial of its shape, size, or form, it's all the same matter. It's all the same energy. There again, we have the, the oneness of life. The oneness of life is, if you can figure that out, you, you've really caught something. You know, the mystics, they all talk about the form and the formless. It's a formless energy turning into form. Now, when I realized the true meaning of God, I didn't think it was a big deal. I honestly didn't. Because I thought, oh, I know what they really mean now. It means that everything is the same energy whether it's in form or formless. There's the oneness again, because we're all one. Now, people will say, oh, yeah, I know we're all one, but they don't know they're all one. There's a difference between thinking and knowing. And you know how the, the mystics talk about knowing? And people will say, oh, you're very arrogant saying you know. Why don't you say you think so? You can't do that once you know, because you know. And the knowing is not of this world. It's of a, a world that hasn't been created. It's before form. And that's where all your answers are. That's why you have to go inside, deep into your soul, before form. And then when you get an insight, you take this formless this formless knowledge, which is called, sometimes called, wisdom. And wisdom has nothing to do with the intellect. Wisdom is before form. Wisdom is a, a spiritual intelligence before the creation of this, what you call, reality. 
Now you say, well, how can I go before form? This doesn't, doesn't make sense. You're already there, because the form and the formless is all one. Go back to that oneness again. And if you can realize that, you're a very lucky person. It's a mysterious life. Life is a divine mystery. And once you realize that, you join the mystery. You know it's a mystery. It's a mystery that can never be told. We try. But remember this morning I told you, you must go beyond the word. The words can only express and so much. The words are a guide. Then you go beyond the words. And when you hear beyond the words, it's what you call an insight. A revelation. And I could never figure out how anybody didn't understand me. I know I have a little bit of Scottish accent, but I thought I was talking English, and it was a funny thing that everybody in my life understood me prior to this, so why don't they understand me now? And I could not figure out for the world of me why nobody understood what I was saying. Then one day, it just dawned on me. I was given away insights. I was given away the invisible. I was given away the unformed. I've given away the mystical secret of life. And to hear it, you have to have an insight. You go inside, you recognize what's being said because you and I are one. You and I are one. That's back to that oneness again. There's nothing in this world that any human being can tell you about truth or true knowledge that you don't know. You are as holy and as, as knowledgeable as any human being in the world if you can get your personal thoughts out of the way and go to what you call purity of thought. That's why you go to the, the church, your religion. I don't care what your religion is. You go to try and purify your thoughts, try and purify your mind. And I found out that if I can talk before form, this is what happens. That's where miracles take place. In a miracle, you can't explain a miracle. It's unbelievable, it's because it has no form. It, it comes from the unformed. It comes before time, space, and matter. And time, space, and matter is this physical world, this physical reality. You take away time, space, and matter, and you're left with nothing. And that's what you're looking for, is nothing the great nothingness. And the great nothingness is before form. That's where all the wisdom comes from. Wisdom doesn't come from here. Wisdom comes from here. It comes from inside, deep in your soul. And once you find out wisdom, you, you, it's yours. It's yours for life. But you try and give it away, you can't because it has no form. It's like a lot of these people that are working with clients that are miraculous, miraculously being cured. They can't tell what happened. All they can say is, I was talking to Dr. So-and-so, and he said these few words, and this is what I heard. Now, their friend could go to Dr. So-and-so and listen to him and hear nothing, because they're listening to the Word. The Word does not carry truth. The word is a guide that leads you to it. You must go beyond the word to that nothingness and let this wisdom come out. Somebody was saying to me, asked me this morning, where could you go for training? You don't need training. All you have to do is get a tape or a book that contains truth and read it. 
Otherwise, you're going to get somebody else's version. But if you can find somebody that knows truth, I don't care who it is, you, it's up to you to find them. And if you can find somebody or find a book that's written with truth and read it, and you spot it. I remember once, just before all this experience happened, I was working away and this fellow I was working with, there was a bit of a lull in the job, and he had this book. And he, he was reading this book. And I said to him, what is it? He says, oh, Scotty, you wouldn't like this. This is not, you don't know anything about this. And I said, well, what is it? And then what it was, it was Krishnamurti. And I said, well, let me see it. And I opened it up in the middle, just random, and he started talking about thought. And something hit me, oh, it hit me so hard. I was oh, so delighted. But by the time I got home, it was gone. So the following morning, I said to him, Larry, can I get that book again? And I went to the center of the book and went from the center to the end, and I couldn't find it. So I went from the beginning to the center, and I couldn't find it. It vanished. It was still in the book but I couldn't spot it. And that's why a lot of these, a lot of people that read Second Chance and Quest of the Pearl and uh, The Missing Link and books like that, they'll phone me up and say, is this another edition, Said, Did you alter this? And I'll say, no, why? Well, I just saw something in it, it wasn't there before. And they'll swear it wasn't there before. But it's always been there but they didn't, they didn't see it. They, you know why? Because they were looking with this and studied this. So when you read these kind of books, as I say, I don't care what book it is, if it contains knowledge, if you're reading it, just read it for a feeling. And as the feeling comes, don't try to figure it out. And the old ego will say, figure it out. Now, as soon as you do that, you've lost it. <laughs> it's like, remember the training on the ego, the Ed? That is such nonsense, it's unreal. It is total nonsense. Ego, Ed, big ego, big mind, little mind. Don't, don't listen to that. <laughs> you know what the ego is? It's a delusion. It's a delusion. It's self-created. And whatever you think the ego is, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's not real. It's made up. Because you think this is what you are, is this body. This is not what you are. This body is simply a container. And what you really are is what's inside, what's deep in the soul. You're a divine being walking through this life trying to find yourself. Truth is, a, a, truth is not of this world. Your truth and my truth is just your personal belief. But truth is not of this world. It's before form. And I'll say again, the only way you can find it is look inside. Look within. And you can't make yourself do it. You can only find a nice feeling and let that feeling take you inside. Quiet your mind. That's why people meditate, to quiet their mind to find this truth. To sit and try and quiet their mind. But I'll tell you right now, you could be downtown New York on a busy Saturday night and walk in silence. Because it's, it's, what you're looking for is not out there. It's the silence inside. And if you hear somebody speaking truth, what they're trying to do, they're trying to quieten your mind. That's what we're doing right now. We're trying to quieten your mind, put you in a state of meditation where your own personal mind goes to sleep for a, just for a second. 
the second you go to sleep, truth appears. And you go, wow, that's incredible. But it only belongs to you. You can never, never, never give it away. You can talk about it, but you can never give it away. Do you think if you could give it away that those wise people throughout time, those mystics, that they wouldn't have given it away? I know in Hawaii, I remember when I lived here, I was looking at the television one night, and this beautiful lady, this old lady, she was about 80, 80 odds, and her husband get on television. And she told, me, she told everybody that her great-grandfather was one of the greatest kahunas ever known. But he used to say to everybody, it's a secret you can't give away. And they took it wrongly. They thought he meant, it's a secret, don't give it away. But he meant, it's impossible to give it away. But this old lady, full of love, full of aloha, but misunderstanding, said, and now it's modern times, and I feel it's about time that we gave it away. And then she taught words, words of truth. But you can't give it away. She missed it. Only you, only you possess wisdom. Only you can find your happiness. Only you can make you sad. Because it's your thoughts, your mind, and your consciousness. It's the usage of these three principles. And that's what takes you through life. People go, go through life angry, spiteful, hateful, just suffering. And I've seen a lot of them suffer. And I'm sure many of you therapists here have seen a lot of suffering. And the incredible feeling it is when all of a sudden, us therapists, you're talking to somebody that's suffering, then you see them cry, but they're crying with joy because all their suffering has just vanished instantly. It's just gone. And they'll turn around and say, I realize now all it was was my thoughts. You don't have to sit and meditate. Look at this. Look at the beauty here. You take a walk, and you can walk in meditation. Listen to music. That can take you into meditation. I know people at golf, they go into a state of meditation. And all it is, to quiet the mind. A quiet mind. You're looking for a silent mind because it's in the silent chambers of the soul that the incubation takes place and this world becomes a reality. You reverse it and then you go back inside and you find the answer. The answer is always, always, always within. Always. No man is better than another. Nobody. We're all created equal. Now, I'm not talking about the form. We're all created equal because, we'll go back to that energy again, we're all the same energy. Know that formless energy? We're all that formless energy turned into a form. Ignore the form, and you're all the same energy. And that's where the equality comes in. We can't all be created equal when you've got tall guys, little guys, fat guys, skinny guys, big women, small women. We're all different because this is a physical reality. The equality comes when you realize something inside, we're all the same energy. And I guarantee anybody in this world realizing the true nature of thought will be instantly 
in line. I guarantee anybody that realizes the true nature of consciousness would be instantly enlightened. I guarantee anybody that realizes the true nature of mind will be instantly enlightened. And from then on, the world would never be the same because you've entered another dimension altogether. And you live in this dimension and you look outside and you see the physical reality. You see, everybody, <laughs> they're all looking for the same thing in a different way. You know how they say love is the answer? Because pure mind, divine mind, is pure love. Divine consciousness is pure love. Divine thought is pure love. It's purity of thought. And once you realize that, you're home. You're free. You've conquered this world. You've found your way home. From where you came from. You've traveled through this journey. You've looked, turned around gone home. And once you do that, then you help others. And the more you can help others, the more you help yourself. Believe me, that's really true. The more you can help others, the better the feeling you will get. Remember, I kept telling you it's a feeling. I never knew what love was. And I was 42 years old. I thought I did. I'd have been in love many times. And I loved this and I loved that. And, no, no. It's a different kind. It's a different kind of love. It's nothing to do with this physical world. You're in love with the world. It's a, a universal love. And if you can get this, find this universal love, this will guide you through life. It'll take you through all the hurdles. This doesn't mean to say your life from then on is going to be a breeze, believe me. But it's how you handle it that makes a difference. I know people that have cursed and swore at me and said I was talking absolute rubbish they even send me nasty letters, nasty phone calls. And maybe two months later, I get another letter saying, please forgive me. I just realized what you meant. And of course, forgiveness is a great thing. Forgiveness is one of the greatest things in the world. It's the most powerful thing in the world. It will relieve you of so much suffering you wouldn't believe. Because if I hold something against you, who's suffering? Me. And I don't want to suffer, so I'll forgive you. Now, that doesn't mean to say I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to do it again, but I forgive you for doing the deed. I don't forgive the deed, I'm forgiving you. You see what I mean? It makes all the difference in the world. That's why all those biblical teachings talk about love and forgiveness. Because they're both the same thing. If you have forgiveness in your heart, you have love in your heart. If you have love in your heart, you have forgiveness. You, you think when you forgive somebody, you're letting them off the hook. That's not true. You're letting yourself off the hook. Otherwise, you're just going to be caught in that hook and you'll drag yourself through life in a terrible state with anger, hostility, all in your head, buzzing, buzzing. Every time you see that person, every time you think of them, you get angry. Who's suffering? If I'm angry at somebody that did something to me, say, maybe 50 years ago, they're not suffering. If they're in Scotland, 
They don't even know I exist. I'm suffering. And that's why where all the Freudian stuff is wrong, because there is no forgiveness. They take you back and go into that hellhole again and make you suffer. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just forgive. And to forgive is to forget. And once you do forgive, you just don't think about it. If you think about it, you're not forgiving. It's very important, extraordinarily important that. In therapy today, they honestly believe that the, that the mind and the brain are the same thing. And that is totally wrong. That's where the big mistake is. The mind is spiritual. It's a spiritual nature. That's what it is. And the brain is a physical computer. And it's just like any other computer. Whatever you put into that computer is all you can get out. You program it. You program that computer to do certain things and it will do it for you. Now, if you put hate and negative feelings into that computer, that's all is going to come out. On the other hand, if you put nice feelings into that computer, that's what you're going to get out. Now, you might be stuck with a computer that every time you open it up, and that means to say every time you open your eyes, you see negative. And it's up to you to recompute and take the old program and throw it away. That's the only way I can explain it. You listen for a feeling. And they, well, these mystics, when they talk about the difference between listening and listening, when you listen, you're listening to the voice, you're listening to the, the words, you're trying to figure out what they are. But when you truly listen, you listen beyond the word. And when you go beyond the word, you find the answer Guess where you find it? Inside yourself. And that's why those mystics talk about the difference between hearing and hearing. Uh, that sounds silly. What's the difference between hearing and hearing? One hearing is, is hearing from your intellect. The other hearing is hearing from within your own soul. Because your own soul knows the answer. And people may tell you that this takes years of dedication. I get this all the time. And I know it's not true. Because I didn't. And I'm no different from anybody else in the world. That I know. It's no big deal. It's simplicity itself. And if you ever hear anybody, like, Consciousness, the gift of consciousness, gives us the ability to see creation. That's it, period. Now, I went to the bookstore once, and I pick up this book, and it's got about 300 pages on consciousness. I've already told you what it is in a few words. What do you think the rest of it is? It's the same with thought, it's the same with the mind. If you get a book this big and it says, I'm going to tell you what thought is, and it's this thick, you know you could take it and go, and there's the answer. Because the more it's in it, the more complicated it becomes. Keep it simple. In simplicity lies the answer to all complexity. And complexity is taking simplicity and adding and adding and adding garbage. And you make it complicated. I remember Dr. Mills and I went into this 
secret naval base to try and help them with a problem. And they actually sent for us. I couldn't believe it. They sent for a doctor and me to go and fix this problem. And I think it took us about two seconds to fix it, because it was simple. And I remember this physicist saying to me, finally, finally, we got a professional. I felt so embarrassed that you wouldn't believe. <laughs> we were so smart that when we got out and we went to the, the not the subway, the, you know, the, what do you call it, a train? We couldn't figure out where to put our money. <laughs> and somebody had to come up and... <laughs> so can you imagine how embarrassed we felt? And we laughed all the way. After we left, we just laughed. It, just, it was comical. And after we gave him our answer, the guy said, brilliant, brilliant. It was stupid. It honestly is a mystical dream. And we're in this mystical dream. And you have a free will to go through this mystical dream the way you want, the way you see it. And people will say, oh, well, that's okay for you, but what about me? I'm in a different kettle of fish. No, you're not. We're both in this mystical dream, and you... The only way you can get out of it, the only way you can see it, is to realize the true nature of mind, true nature of thought, the true nature of consciousness. There's three. Take any one, take your pick, because one will lead to the other, because the three of them are the trinity of all psychological experience here on Earth. Once you see that, you're free. You've made it. But there's different levels. And I know in this room right now, there's doctors, there's teachers, there's all different kinds of people having tremendous success in their offices. And they're all doing it to different levels. And you're always learning. You never, 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 never can come to the end of learning. And even if you do become enlightened, then you realize how stupid you really are. <laughs> and you start all over again. You have to walk through this divine dream, knowing you're the dreamer, and looking at this world in a different way. And people say, oh, that must be a strange feeling. It isn't. It's no different from the way you see it right now. The only thing is we see it differently. It's no big deal, honestly, it's no big deal. I just could not understand why everybody was making a big deal out of what you call enlightenment. It was beyond me. I just couldn't understand it. But you're all sitting. Right now, you're all sitting enlightened. And you don't know it. You know how that saying, I am what I seek? That's the oneness of life. The oneness of life is the most greatest thing in the world that you can realize. And I hope someday that everybody in this world can realize that. That'd be a marvelous thing. And the consciousness that I see how it's rising in this world, and I see doctors and therapists Nurses, all changing. I see jails changing. Imagine, can you imagine walking into a jail where the prisoners say, I found my freedom in jail. Now what I'd like you to do is to help the guards because they're suffering. That's unusual. <laughs> but that's what's happening. Anyway, tomorrow, 
you've got the day off. And you know how I'm talking about tranquil mind? It's a beautiful place. Do what you want. But just try and keep your mind tranquil. And if you try and figure this out, if you find yourself trying to figure it out, just shake your head and say no. <laughs> Enjoy the feeling.